Oh my gosh, I'm so thirsty. That's what happens when you chat too much. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title today, we're talking about the tips, tricks, and tactics I have for living life legally blind. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I've been living with Stargis disease. If you never heard of it, you're not the only one. I don't even know it existed until I was diagnosed. Pretty much what it is, is my central vision is diminishing. I'm past the point of legal blindness. I was legally blind 2015, 16 onwards, and it's been rapidly deteriorating as of late. I'll never be completely blackout blind. A lot of people ask that, so I just wanna put that out the way. But if you know someone or you are someone living with Stargis disease, you know is a lot. So I wanted to share some tricks up my sleeve, some tips that I have, and some tactics that I use on the daily to live independently and make the most out of the situation. I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, you know what to do, tap the like, and if you're going through it too, share some tips with the community down below and let's go. You know me, I love a good list, and this list is gonna be an acronym. Oh. <laughs> I'm such a yoga girl. So OMM is gonna be the acronym for today. I know it sounds simple, I'm gonna make it a little more complex. It's not just a one, two, three, it's gonna be a one A and B and so on and so forth. So. O stands for organize. Count on me the clean freak to come off strong. Organize, everything has a place and there's a place for everything. That's a saying, right? I feel like I heard it years ago and it's true. And if it's not, it's a saying today. What you need to do when you cannot see, well, actually I think everybody needs to do this to make their life more efficient, is organize, organize, organize. Organization is key from work, school, home, Organize, it's crazy. I don't like to throw diagnoses around because I don't like when people play with my blindness. It's funny when I meet someone new and I'm like, yeah, I'm blind. They're like, oh, I'm blind too. And I'm like, no, I'm actually legally blind. They're like, oh yeah, I am when I take off my glasses. <laughs> it's okay. A lot of people don't know and that's what I'm here for. I can't say, I can't say it's OCD what I'm about to tell you, but it's giving very intense. <laughs> That's all I will say. So I organize everything. You know when they say detail oriented on an application or resume? Picture beside that. Cause that's what I have to do every single day. It's to the point where I look around and sometimes like this is next level crazy. My closet is color coordinated down to my underwear. My essential oils are alphabetized. Is that how you say that word? My spices are organized by the type of cuisine when I'm at work or doing work things, my desktop is pristine. I have to do this because of the next letter, which we'll get into, but also because it makes things more seamless. When you can't see well and you're grabbing for something, you're in the flow of something, whether it's working or cooking or just living life, you can't always be interrupted by like, hey, what's this? I can't tell you the amount of times that I picked out the wrong thing, whatever the thing was, and that's why I got even more into a habit let me be honest, I was organized from day one, <laughs> asked my mom, but I had to become next level organized in order to thrive in this life. I highly recommend everybody does, especially if you're living with sight loss. Even my bathroom is organized. The first bin is skincare and body products. The second one is hair care, and the third is PR and miscellaneous. That way when I'm grabbing, I can't see the labels, but I know where things are proximal to where the other thing is. It's just, in theory, I think because I've been living like this for so long, it doesn't sound like a lot of work, but if you're living a chaotic life, it's gonna take a lot to adjust and keep the routine, but I'm used to it now, so it works for me, and it helps me make up for lost time that I spend doing other things because I'm legally blind. The next letter is M, and that's for magnify. Now the 2A of this is physical magnification, whether you can still use a magnifying glass or to be, if you're like me, past that point of no return, magnification apps, e-readers, Zoom text, anything that's embedded in your software or tech that allow you to zoom in and see smaller fonts blown up. The thing about Stargis disease is your central vision is deteriorating, so you have to use your peripheral to see. And you know what it's like looking out of the corner of your eye. You can't see clearly. You can get an idea of what it is, but you can't focus. That's why your eyes shift when you read a page or you're looking at someone's face because you're using that part of your eye 
to capture the detail and decipher it in your brain. When those cells die, they don't regenerate, and that's what a star arts people are dealing with. So in order to compensate or make up for that, using magnification, whether you put on an e-reader and it reads out to you, or you can zoom in and see what you're looking at, that'll help. My personal favorite is my magnification app. It comes embedded on my iPhone, and when I think about it, yes, the iPhone is $1,800, which is insane in the membrane, but a lot of magnification designated tools are 500 plus and they're only partially subsidized by ADP here in Ontario. So when you weigh it out, a phone that does a lot of things versus a magnification app that does one thing and is usually bigger than an iPhone, I'd rather just pop the iPhone in my purse and go and that's what I've been doing. I would say, and this sounds like an exaggeration, but it isn't, I use my iPhone to magnify at least 100 times a day, if not 200 times a day. You have to think about it like this. If you're not living with Stargus disease, just imagine waking up and every single thing you do every single day involves you to see with clarity, but you can't. So I use my iPhone to bridge that gap. And sometimes I max out the magnification and it doesn't help, but I magnify everything. I magnify the options on this camera sometimes to make sure it's set to the right thing. When I go to eat, I magnify the menu when I'm going from point A to point B. Sometimes I have to zoom in on the street sign with the iPhone. I magnify instructions, recipes, any kind of labels, just make sure that I'm getting the right thing because I bought the wrong thing or picked out the wrong thing many times before. I've magnified myself. When I used to try to paint my nails, I would magnify to see and make sure I was doing it properly. I gave up on that. I'm just like, it's a no for me. It's a lot, it's a lot. Anytime you need to see something clearly and directly, that's when I need to whip out my phone. And it's tiring because I remember when there was a time when I didn't need to do that, but that's another video for another day. Back to 2A, another example of tangible magnification can be using a magnification mirror think a contact lens mirror that's what I use on the daily to put on my eyeliner mascara and brows when I'm doing more than that for YouTube I definitely need that to double and triple check sometimes I'm out with my friends I come home and I look at our footage I said they really had me out here looking like that mascara up here or down here I just you know I can't see just let me know I have to use a magnification mirror it's actually intended for contact lenses it's 10x so it's concave and I can see my whole face. Without it, I can't do anything. I can't just go up to a regular mirror no matter how close I am and see my face, it's a no-go. I once bought a five times beauty mirror and it was also 10 times the price. So I wouldn't recommend those unless you have money to spend. They can also be very big, cumbersome and heavy, which is why I left it at my mom's place. But a contact lens mirror is way more compact. I've traveled overseas with it. There's no problems getting past TSA. It's not heavy, it's lightweight. I've even brought it on weekend trips because if I wanna do anything to my face, if I wanna verify there's anything on my face, I need that. I can't just use a regular mirror anymore. If you wanna still put on makeup or you just wanna make sure that you still look the way you wanna look, grab you one. You can get them from a drugstore. I got mine at Winners because it was half the price. And comparing a $100 magnification mirror to maybe a $6 one, that's a big price difference. You've all been waiting for the last M, the most important one. <laughs> that's funny, no one's been waiting. Whenever you go on social and someone's like, all of you guys have been asking, no, no one's been asking, but I digress. So the last M is memory. Unfortunately, this is not something you can go out and buy. It's not low tech, it's no tech, but it's something you can definitely work on. It's funny, whenever I think of memory, I think of that game back, back in the day. 80s babies like me and 90s kids will know about that game. Was it Guess Who? Where you flip it down and you ask questions. Oh man, all those memory games back in the day. Do kids even play those kind of games anymore? Is everything tech and iPad? So, I had a good memory before, but my memory is unmatched now. It's almost like a separate part of my brain exploded in order to compensate for what I can't see. Let me break it down to you guys. You need to work on your memory because you can't just pick up and see what you used to before. Especially as things get worse, you're gonna rely more on repetition and motor skills of the just doing the same thing. Need a perfect picture. I'm not sure if that video is gonna go up before this or after this, but I'm gonna do a dedicated video on how I film and do all this YouTube setup because 90% of it is memory. Just like 90% of my life is memory and 10% is magnification and organization. When it comes to memory, 
It's as detailed as knowing what setting on my camera is best for me and remembering which button on the touch screen it is. Same way I memorize what's the record button without seeing it on my microphone or keyboard shortcuts on my iMac. When it comes to work, especially when I was doing a lot of data entry, it's a lot of memory. It was crazy to the point where I'd open one screen, go to the seventh option, would open a third option, then I picked the second one of that, then I scroll to the left side of the screen to, to toggle between the second thing. All of this I can't really see. I see where the cursor's going, but I can't see what it says. So I'm remembering 13 step processes in my head and I'm doing it swiftly because to zoom in and out to verify each time would kill so much time. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't even have words. It's a lot. But when you get into the routine of organizing and memorizing and where you can't magnifying it makes your life so much easier i don't think i'd be independent if i didn't have these three tips in my hat I, I just i don't know what to say i honestly i don't think i'd be able to do what i do every day because you need vision every day of your life really picture this everything you do every single day requires vision unless you're closing your eyes to meditate or listening to music to get from point a to point b you need vision and when I think of OM, O two M's or O M squared, whatever you want to call this list, the O and the last M are the things that you can control for. You can organize and you can memorize. And when you're in a new situation or dealing with something different, you magnify. That's the way I see it. But if you had to, you would use all three collaboratively every single day to make the most out of the situation you're going through. I know the biggest part of losing vision is not vision loss itself, it's the loss of the life you thought you would have and just the way things are unfolding for you. But in the meantime, until they have a cure, you gotta make this life work for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, comment down below. Let me know what your favorite tip was. And until next week, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.